My name is Pastor Sam Velez. I'm the executive pastor here at Iglesia Cristiana Misericordia. God has a specific word for you. Open up your heart and get ready to receive. Taking five feels really good. It feels good when me and you can go on vacation. I know this pandemic has kind of put a limit on how we go to vacations, but it feels good, doesn't it? It feels good that we leave work behind, and then sometimes when we come back from vacation, we want to get a vacation from our vacation because we did so much. And, and, and it, it feels amazing just to have some type of of rest. And if me and you are going to have this eternal perspective, can I tell you something? Rest is a part of that. Me and you cannot get a clear picture of God wants. Me and you cannot get a clear picture of what he's telling us to do, of what we need to do. Not even a clear picture of who he is in our life, unless me and you take five. Unless me and you learn to rest. Rest has to be a normal routine in your life. Because a lot of people, there's people that love to be busy. They want to be busy. They can't, they can't live without being busy. They got to do something. I got to do this. I got to do that. I can't just be home. And the reality is, is that, church, if you think that being busy is going to be effective, can I tell you that is the opposite of what's going to happen to you? Because busyness does not mean fruitfulness. Busyness will affect the fruit that God wants to build in your life. When me and you become workaholics, when me and you become tied to something, when me and you become so consumed that we can't even be home and be present, there's something wrong. In fact, the Bible says this in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. Can you put it up there? This is when God began to create everything. He says, the Bible says, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Years later, God has this thing called the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a moment, a time in the week, a day in the week where there is no work, where you, you know, you're not supposed to do any kind of work. You're supposed to rest and be present and give glory to God. God sets the Sabbath aside for the people. In fact, if you have your Bibles, I want to focus on a situation. This is Jesus. And if you go to Mark chapter 2, we're going to meet verses uh, 23 through 28. Mark chapter 2, 23 through 28 says this. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, have you ever read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. If you get nothing today, here's one thing. Man was not made for the Sabbath. Sabbath was made for man. Okay? In other words, days like today, it's not for you like you're dressing up to go to work. It's for you to enjoy to rest in his presence. In fact, I want to read to you some stats. Anybody like stats? Not everyone. Let me tell you something. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health reported in a CDC publication that stress levels at work are higher than ever with health care expenditures nearly 50% or greater for workers who report high levels of stress. If you think about it, I feel like anxiety has gone up, stress has gone up, divorce goes up, things go up when there is no rest. When there is no rest. And here's the thing, church, you have to understand something. That the Sabbath, God didn't suggest take a Sabbath. It's a command. So every time we ignore a Sabbath, every time we ignore rest, we're actually acting in disobedience without even re realizing it. 
And then we wonder why sometimes we can't enjoy the things that we used to enjoy. And then we can't begin to experience all that God wants to give us because we've put rest aside. But here's the thing. This is what the C, these people said to the CDC. This is what rest does. They have some positive things. I, just, I gave you something negative, and let me give you the positive. It's kind of like when, says, when someone asks you, do you want the good news or the bad news? I gave you the bad news first. But here's the good news. Rest, this is what rest does. Rest brings better productivity and concentration. Rest will prevent depression, lowers the risk of heart disease, and you gain more in social emotional health. Anybody need some more social and emotional health today? And I want to talk about rest because rest is such an important thing, but there's, a, there's the rest that God wants and then there's the rest that the Pharisees did not understand. Because to Jewish people, the Sabbath is on a Saturday. So for Jewish people on a Saturday, like yesterday, they literally do not do anything. They close everything, all the, all the stores, the restaurants, the businesses. Pharisees and Jewish people, when they look at the Sabbath, they took it to a point where they, they didn't want to lift a finger. And before you know it, the Sabbath to them make, creates more work to experience what's supposed to be rest instead of enjoying it. And so Jesus is faced with this issue of rest. And if me and you are going to enjoy rest, enjoying resting in God's presence, enjoying peace, then we have to understand some stuff about rest. If you're taking notes, number one is this, is that rest is satisfaction, not survival. Rest is satisfaction, not survival. Maybe you're in this room and maybe a lot of you, you're, you are exhausted, you're frustrated. If you're a teacher or you work in the school system, I'm sure you're singing the praises of God because you're off for the whole week. Some of you teachers, I know deep down you want to scream and dance it up because you understand that you don't got to go to, you don't got to do any kind of thing, any kind of work. And I'm sure that your kids are excited. But a lot of us, you know, we come to church every Sunday, every week. We're tired. We're exhausted. Maybe last night you had a rough time. Maybe this week was just one thing after another, after another. Maybe this season of your life has just, you feel like, man, I just cannot catch a break. And a lot of times we feel like that. But I'm here to, to tell you that because God has called us to rest, rest for me and you looks different. Because rest for me and you, you have to understand that when I talk about rest, when we come on Sunday mornings, the reason why some of you are so frustrated is because you're not enjoying God's presence. You're here because you, you, you've, some of you, you have this religious mindset that sometimes I got to be here because that's the Christian thing to do instead of saying, you know, I get to be here because I get to enjoy God. If me and you were to change our perspective of what it means to set aside time for God, of what it means to set aside our Sunday, our services would be more enjoyable for you because it's not about the song. It's not about, man, who's singing, who's preaching. It's not about any of those things. It's about me and you enjoying God. When God created Sabbath, remember, the Sabbath was created for man so that man can enjoy him, so that we can enjoy him. It's like, it'd be, it's kind of like this. Some of, this is how, here, let me put you an example. It'd be crazy if me and you go to Olive Garden today and the food's there, our families are around us, but we're all, we're so focused on, 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 um, on the waiter. We're so focused on the manager. Is the manager standing in the right position? Is, it the, is, it, is their waiter speaking, you know? Are they communicating? Imagine if all you did was you sat and the food was present and all you did was you focused on everything else but your food and your family. We don't do that. We order our food. We tell, we tell our waiter what we, need to, what we need to say. They leave and we eat and talk and laugh. We don't sit there you know, well, I'm not going to eat until I see that. Every, no, nobody does that. 
So why is it that sometimes we come to God's presence with everything else but God? The Pharisees, it's funny how we see this story. The Pharisees and the disciples are both in proximity of Jesus, yet one side is enjoying Jesus, the other side is frustrated. But in other words, mean you can be so close to Jesus, yet leave unsatisfied. We can be so close to Jesus. We can be in youth group. We can be a young adult. We can be in a small group. We can come to church every Sunday, but yet still leave empty and frustrated the way we came in. And it has nothing to do with the proximity. It has everything to do with my heart being open. Too many times we can come to church and leave frustrated. And my desires for you and, and my encouragement to you is that you would come every single Sunday and understand that, man, we're here to rest in Jesus. We're here to praise God. We're here to enjoy ourselves. We're here to hear, we're here to hear God's word. We're here to feed. We're here to, to gain as much as we can because this is the day the Lord has made. And the Bible says, I will rejoice and be glad in him. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in him. When me and you start acting like the Pharisees and me and you start coming to church like I got a, I got, I'm showing up for a job or I'm showing up for this or I'm showing that we're going to be like the Pharisees where we are on survival mode. We're doing this to survive. I'm doing this to check it off on the list. I'm doing this because I have to and because the Bible says I need to. No, 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 church. God is turning the, he has to, you have to understand Jesus was challenging the Pharisees to let them know, hey, enjoy me. The Pharisees were so fixated on the fear of what they were doing that they were missing out on their father. They were missing out on what's more important. It's crazy. The disciples are with Jesus. Who knows if they were really, really hungry, how hungry they were. Who knows what the conversation was. Who knows what was going on. The Bible says they were just picking off little grains in the fields, picking them off and eating. That's all they were doing. And Jesus corrects the Pharisees because the Pharisees were like, oh, how dare they? Remember I told you, for the Jews, this was... You, that's how serious the Jews were. You can't even pick something off without getting in trouble. And Jesus was like, hey, don't worry about that. Worry about setting aside time for God. That's why he says that man was not made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath was made for man. And so many times, church, we can get so caught up with work we can get so caught up with school. We can get so caught up with this thing called life that we never really understand how to rest. We never really understand how to set aside time. We never fully understand that, man, when I come into this place, because the re if you don't know, the reason why the Jews are on Saturday and we are on Sunday, the, only, the real big reason why all of this is because when Jesus died on the cross three days later, that's Sunday. He died on a Friday. We're here on a Sunday. That's when it, the church began to meet on Sundays. The church in Acts chapter 2 and all of that, that whole thing, that cycle began because they were celebrating God on the day of resurrection. And they wanted to separate themselves from the Jewish culture. That's why we meet on Sundays. But remember, we meet on Sundays to enjoy God's goodness and his presence. We enjoy Sundays because we get to come here and just get what we need from God. <laughs> the Pharisees were all about fear. The disciples were all about faith. And you know what happened? While the Pharisees are starving spiritually, the disciples were feeding. They were feeding they were close to the master. They were enjoying the master. They weren't worried about all the other things. They weren't coming and, and worrying about the rules and all of the things. No, no, no. They were there to be, they were there and they were being there to get satisfied. They wanted to be satisfied.
They wanted God's presence and God's peace. And the Pharisees, the Pharisees, they were so focused on religion and rules that they could not find satisfaction. And the sad thing about this is the, the Pharisees were putting that burden on other people. So no wonder people struggled with really, really loving God. No wonder people struggled to really, really come to his presence. They were so worn out by someone putting a bunch of rules on top of them. Imagine if I, we had to make you do a lot of things just so you can get God's presence. You got to do 10 jumping jacks and get God's presence. You got to run a mile to get, imagine that. I'm not saying that's what Jews did, but ridiculous things just because. So when me and you, when we think of the Sabbath, when me and you think of rest, rest is satisfaction. It's not survival. I'm not just resting so that I can go back to work and go 10 hours hard on whatever I'm doing. No, I'm resting because I need the rest. I need God. I'm not just resting so that I can ignore my family two days from now. No, no, I'm resting so I can be present because his presence is here. It's satisfaction, not survival. Number two is this, is that it's focus, not distraction. Rest is focus, not distraction. Rest is about me focusing on becoming more like God, on becoming a better son, a better daughter, on becoming a better father, on becoming a better mother, a better husband, wife, grandparent, on becoming. That's what rest is, on becoming. If you are more focused on what you're doing and what you're not doing than becoming, then you will never become everything that God's called you to be. Because it's about focus. Not distraction. In fact, if you go to Hebrews 4.11, really, really quick, Hebrews 4.11, it says this, it says, let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. And the rest that the Hebrew writer is talking about is the rest that we will all gain at some point, and that is heaven. But we, here's the one thing. He says, let everyone make an effort. If me and you do not make an effort to rest, if me and you do not make an effort to become more like Jesus, if me and you do not make any kind of effort, then we will make an effort on other things. We will make an effort on things that will hurt us. We will put more effort on things that will destroy us. We will put more effort on things that will cause division in our household, cause division with our family. We will make an effort on everything else. But if we and you can learn to make an effort to enter his rest, an effort to be more like him, an effort to grow, an effort to change, if we can make an effort in those things, we will spend less time putting an effort on things that don't matter. We'll spend less time putting an effort on bitterness and hate. We'll spend less time putting an effort on addictions and things that sometimes hurt us. We'll spend less time putting an effort and everything else because we decided to say, you know what, I'm going to focus and put an effort on rest. Man, these Pharisees were focused. They were just on the wrong thing. In fact, these Pharisees were distracted. Like I said in my example, they were distracted with everything else but what was what in front of them. Jesus tried time and time again to get them to know that he was God. He was trying to speak to them. They saw the miracles. Let me tell you something. The Pharisees were very smart people. I know in movies, they make Pharisees look like these chubby, dumb guys. But they were very, very smart people. They knew the law. They were well-educated. They were very smart. 
So they weren't ignorant to what was happening. They just did not accept what was happening. And there they are. They're focused on the wrong things because they're distracted by everything else but God. And church, we have to rearrange our focus. If we're going to enter a rest to see God more clearly, to hear from God, to understand what's happening, then we have to understand that rest is about focus. Maybe practically what you need to do is sometimes you need to learn to say no to things now so that you can enjoy tomorrow's yes. Maybe you're the type of person that you have a hard time saying no. You say yes to everything. Except to the things that are most important to you. And when we fail to say no, I know no sounds negative because no is usually used in a negative connotation. We tell our kids no for almost everything. Can I go to the bathroom? No. You know. But we must learn, church, to say no to some things now so we can enjoy tomorrow's yes. Whatever that looks like. Maybe you're not used to saying no. There's this book I want to encourage you. It's called Boundaries. Look up that book. That will help you learn to say no. It's a, it's a book that's not just for, it's not a pastoral book. It's like a book in general. You're whatever, business leader, whatever. It's called Boundaries. Because sometimes what happens is we don't create boundaries. And because we don't create boundaries, what happens, our life goes haywire and we're frustrated and we're tired. And if we go to the root of the problem, it's because we don't know how to say no. The last thing what I want to tell you about, gra- about rest is that rest is grace, not guilt. Rest is grace, not guilt. These Pharisees in this story were living their lives out of guilt because they felt like if I don't do this, oh my gosh, God's gonna God's gonna do this to me or God's gonna punish me or and then before you know it, all the people that are following the Pharisees are living their life from a place of guilt and they kept missing out on grace because grace is a person his name is Jesus rest is grace not guilt rest is me and you coming with our frustrations and our doubts and our concerns and our stress and coming before God and releasing that to him That's grace, coming from a place of grace so I can receive grace so that I can move forward, not so that I can come to church and be guilty, sing, worship God guilty, hear the word guilty, leave here guilty, and never fully experiencing everything that God has for us. It's grace, not guilt. It's me and you embracing that all all God has for us for our soul's sake. If you could stand. As we get ready to conclude, the reason we want, I wanted to talk about this is because this can easily become a problem if we don't put it in proper perspective. Maybe you're here and you're saying, you know what, Pastor Sam, it's just sometimes I don't have, I, I got to work on a Sunday. Or maybe some, you're in this room and sometimes you have friends and family members that maybe they can't come on a Sunday. Whatever day that you get off, use that as your Sabbath. Sabbath is me and you setting some time away. If you're off on Saturdays and Sundays, come Saturday, you know what? For once in your life, sleep in. Watch, you know, spend time with God, receive from him, and enjoy the day. 
You want to watch The Mandalorian on Disney Plus? Do it. What you're doing today, this is what we're doing. We're practicing rest. And then from here, we go with our families. We get to eat Sundays or, and any day that you have set aside for rest, they're to be enjoyed. I would hate for you to come every Sunday feeling this, like you, ha you have to show up to a job you don't want to be at. If you're in school, I have to show up to a class that I hate the professor. Please don't hate me. You know, showing up like that, of course you're going to leave this place and not want to be back sometimes. And of course you're going to say, I'm going to come on Sunday and then I'll come back three Sundays from now when I feel like I need to come. No, no, no. If we change our perspective, we'll realize, man, I get to gain Sunday. I get to be in God's presence. I got to feel his peace. I get to worship. I get to hear a word. I'm getting fed spiritually. I'm not surviving anymore. I'm thriving. Because of rest. Hey, thank you for tuning in. I hope you were encouraged and challenged through God's word. If you've never received Christ as your savior, today's the day. All you have to do is repeat after me. Say, God, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Come into my heart. I accept you as my savior. If this was your first time, you've made the greatest decision ever. If you're new or you've never been to our church, every single Sunday we have service just for you at 9 a.m. We'll see you there.